Jordan. Yes, who is it? It's Hal Grayson. How about a swim? Yes, I'll be up in a jiffy. That's great. We'll be up on deck. Miss Jordan's a peach, isn't she? You've met her, haven't you, sis? Oh, yes. Last night with Mother. And when a girl gets Mother's approval, believe me, that's an achievement. Enjoying yourself? You know, it, it's frankly embarrassing and all that sort of thing, but I've, uh, I've dropped a guinea. Did you drop it in my room? Oh. Ha! Huh. I say, I... I hope you didn't think that I... First, I thought that, uh, Well, you shouldn't, should you, eh? No, I guess I shouldn't. Bye-bye. Huh. Uh, uh, toodaloo! What time we get into Los Angeles? About four o'clock this afternoon, Miss Jordan. Thank you. But you're not leaving us yet, are you? Oh, no. Now, you can't get rid of me before Panama. Miss Jordan. Was it on the continent you met Mr. Upson? It was on a boat. Mm -hmm. You know how it is in life sometimes. You uh, open a door and before you know it, you bump into somebody. <coughs> I, I say, old thing, uh, do we take on any passengers at Los Angeles? Why, well, yes. As I recall, there's a group of passengers going through to Panama. The Trixie Snell girl got to perform in the Bull Ring Cabaret. You mean cabaret girls? Well, dancers, entertainers, hostesses. You can call them almost anything you like. Ha <laughs> uh, ha! Uh, Hoochie-coochie dancers, they <laughs> are. <laughs> Will they be permitted to mix with the passengers? Uh, they are passengers, Mrs. Grayson. The company cannot discriminate. Well, the passengers can discriminate, I assure you. Yes, I quite agree with you, Mother. That type should be kept in its place. Don't you think so, Dale? That depends on the type and the place. color every year, but they still call her red. Can the chatter save your pet for Panama? Say, you'd forget your rosy cheeks if they weren't slapped down with a paintbrush. I know I had them when I bumped into that traveling man last night. The brakes, I guess. Another farmer's dog. Have you looked in the First National? Oh. 
hurried. Well, try the second branch, you sim. Oh, hot dog! Hot dog! One side, sailor. You ain't seen nothing yet. In all the world, no trip like this. <laughs> Hi, Skipper. How's your old compass? Well, hello, Miss Nell. Glad to see you again. Hey, sailor! Look who's back! Come If you'll excuse me, Mr. Grayson, I think I'll go down to my cabin. Well, uh, I'll see you later, won't I? Why, yes. Unless you look the other way. That's it. I think it is. Uh, who's the roommate? Last time you bumped me with a contortionist. Every time I looked at her in bed, I thought I was having a nightmare. Oh, she's a kid I picked up in Frisco. Kind of green, but she can sing. Oh, amateur, huh? What are we supposed to do, wiener? Well, there's nothing like a little fresh meat. After all, customers get kind of tired of has been. You should know. Why, you low down, plug face. Oh, as I was saying, dear, we're going to have a delightful trip. <laughs> Why, here's Miss Jordan now. Jolly what? Oh, hello, Miss Jordan. Received my wire, eh? Yes, I did, Miss Nell. I didn't really expect to hear from you. This is Jerry Royal, your roommate. Been with me before, and she knows the rope. How do you do, Miss Royal? Shake, Jordan. Hey, Trixie, when do rehearsal start? Not till this gang of slobs get their sea legs. And listen, you, keep your mitts off those sailors. They've got enough on their hands keeping this tub afloat. The last we'll see at Trixie till we get into port. She's a good egg, except when she gets scrambled. Got a nail file, honey? What's the matter? Did you lose the key? No, I locked it in my trunk so they'll know where it is. <laughs> the first time in show business? Yes, it's my first opinion. Well, you sure picked a tough spot for a beginner. Well, you've got to begin someplace. Yeah? Well, you don't know the bull ring or Trixie Snell's technique. Have you been here before? Honey, I've been to Panama so often, I feel like an isthmus. Oh, well, if it's so bad, why do you and the other girls keep on going back again? Oh, different girls, different reasons. But mostly because it's just our speed. You know, you can't make a silk purse out of a horse's neck. And there's another reason. Good hunting for husbands. Say, there's plenty unmarried men to every woman. Why, it's a regular he harem. <laughs> I shouldn't think a good-looking girl like you'd have any trouble finding a husband. She wanted one. Thanks for them kind words, sister, but I am married. You are? Yeah, are, am, was, and is going to be. Oh, you're joking. No, sir. Three times loser. Trouble with me is I go gaga over tattoo marks. Three splices and three sailors. The kind of sailors I hitched up with ain't never seen an anchor. <laughs> How do you lose them? They don't just run away, do they? Well, some of them get lost in the fog. The rest of them I just throw up. Well, it was open all the time. They forgot to lock it. Well, that was number one. Olaf Anderson. He was a pretty good guy. Not much to look at. But, oh, sister, what a man. What happened to him? Poor Olaf. He signed on one of those round-the-world cruises, lost his boat in Shanghai, and I guess a dumb dodo can't learn enough Chinese to ask his way home. Want me to help you put your things away? Nope, I don't need any help. Well, I'm all settled. Haven't helped the poor sailors on a night like this. I thought you said you'd sworn off on sailors. Well, the gal's got to have some practice. Some of those sailors are pretty good at practice. So your girlfriend turned out to be one of Trixie Snell's hot numbers. Well, 
have a frightful headache. Will you see me to my cabin? Coming, children. Miss Jordan, I've been waiting for days to find someone to introduce us. It looks as though I'll have to take fate by the forelock and present myself. How do you do, Mr. Bailey? You knew my name. You knew mine. Um, would you dance? Aren't you afraid you'll lose your social standing? I haven't any. I might acquire some dancing with you. Been in. A whole lot, baby, but I always go back to the same one. The same what? Back home where there's Mama and Gretchen and Mabel and Catherine and Isaacs and Aloysius and a baby I ain't even seen yet. And what am I supposed to be, the godmother? Do you realize that for the whole evening you've made me talk of nothing but myself? I certainly couldn't think of a better subject. Mr. Baylor, suppose you tell me the story of your life. You think you'd be interested? That depends on the story. It's a long one. Probably take all of tomorrow afternoon. Think you could stand it? I think so, Mr. Baylor. Tom. Tom. Oh, it must be very late. I think I'd better go. I've had a delightful evening, Tom. Good night, Dale. Good night, Tom. Allow me to help you, my dear. Deuce and embarrassing, what? Here, here. I think the bowie thing rolled under my chair. Here. Well, do dropping things, I see. Oh. Kid. I guess you've been having quite a laugh at my expense, haven't you? Laugh? What do you mean by coming into my room? Oh, well, the joke's on me, all right. Here I was being so very, very careful, and all the time you were one of Trixie Snell's girls. I think you've made a mistake. Good night, Mr. Grayson. Oh, come on, kid. That act's over. Be yourself. Is your face red? Oh, I see. Just a couple of... Outside, Bluebeard. Scram, bug, before I step on you. Say, you're no babe in rompers. You can take care of yourself. Only your technique's old-fashioned. Old-fashioned? Yeah, that, that uh, face-slapping gag. It's amateurish. It's all right for them parlor books and all that. But say, when a goof makes a pass at me, I ups to him and gives him a right hook to the kisser. You know, you got to be prepared for things like that when you get in a troop of Trixies. Maybe I should have studied boxing instead of singing. 
You think you're kidding? Maybe you'll wish you had. You're gonna meet plenty of palookas. Jerry, you make it sound pretty terrible. Oh, gee, kid. I didn't mean to scare you. You just tie onto Jerry's apron strings and everything will be all right. You know, Jerry knows they're onions. And they're tamales, too. <laughs> Tom, what an odd curio. It's a sort of good luck charm. I got it from an Indian chap that I managed to pull out of the water down in the San Blas Islands. That's where your business is? I'm in the copper trade down there. It's pretty wild. Often I don't see a white man for months. I spend my days visiting native villages, sleeping outdoors. It sounds almost as exciting as the bull ring. Deal, tell me. How much do you actually know about Trixie Snell and the bull ring? Not much. But I seem to be learning. But you must have known something about what you were getting yourself in for. Things are a little different from what I thought they'd be, but I think I'll be able to take care of myself all right. Well, I hope so. You know, until I heard about your stage ambitions, I was a little puzzled at seeing a girl like you and Trixie's troupe. Most of the girls in the bull ring I've known signed up with Trixie either as a last resort or at most because they were hunting for sensations. I don't think I really belong to either class. Oh, the old thing is the hey, what? Hall. Hey, what is this hall business you're always getting on? Why, my dear, it's an expletive that is indigenous to my stratum. You don't mean it. Isn't there something a doctor could do about it? Hall. Oh. We're right back where we started. I say, you know, I was quite distressed over your losing your money last night. So after you had retired, I went back to your chair and looked around for your gold piece. Quite sporting of you, old thing. Too bad you didn't find it. But I did, you know, right under your chair. You know, I have remarkable eyesight. Remarkable eyesight? Why, you're a walking microscope. I think you're a honey. <laughs> I say, old thing, I think you're a little bit of all right yourself. Quite spiffing. What? <laughs> Say, what is this old thing in spiffing business? Are you trying to make fun of me? My word, old dear. So you're making fun of me, huh? Say, listen, Egg. If you think you can make fun of me for ten bucks, you're screwy. Paul. Oh. Well, Tom, tomorrow we'll be in Panama. That's right. This is our last night out. I better hurry and dress. Oh, Wirt. What's the matter, Tom? You look as glum as one of those Indians on that island of yours. Oh, I don't know, Dale. Thought of your leaving is bad enough. Leaving with Trixie Snell and all that. That's awfully sweet, Tom. I'm really flattered that you should be worried about me. Worried about you? Why, Dale, I... Kids, come up for air. Jerry! I didn't know you were here. I'd like to know how you do it. Do what? Turn a sphinx into a caveman in six days. You should loan me some of your technique. You seem to be doing all right with the men. How about your friend, Uppy? Oh, I dipped him two days ago. Why? You know the ritzy way I talk when I try to impress someone? Yes. Well, Uppy tried the same thing on me. So I gave him the air. But, Jerry, that's the way Mr. Upson really talks. Oh, my gosh. Well, why didn't he say so?
What a glorious night. Everlasting moonlight. One of the baits of the tropics. Face the truth, Dale. Half the girls who come down here never get home unless some man pays their way. <laughs> You're exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. I know what I'm talking about. I've seen how it goes. The girls start drinking to forget how rotten and sordid the whole thing is. They show up some night too drunk to go on, there's a fight with Trixie and she kicks them out. But Tom, nothing like that's going to happen to me. It might, Dale. That's why I'm worrying. I'm crazy about you. I'd even thought about selling my business interests. Tom. It might sound foolish, but... Well, maybe if you'd promise not to drink. After all, that's how the whole thing starts. You cheapen me by even asking such a thing. Cheapen you? You've cheapened yourself already by associating with Trixie's crowd. Tom! Why act like a child? Why put yourself in the way of temptations that thousands of women haven't been able to resist? Just a minute. I've had just about enough of this. It's going to take more than climate or a crowd to make me a wanton. I know, As Dale, but... Trixie's crowd, I only really know one of them. If she's an example of the rest, I'll throw my lot in with them. table. Uh, wait. All right, girls, let's go. Get in the line. See you later, kid. Good luck. Get out of the way and let me in. My old.
showed about as much pep as a nervous oyster. What's the matter? Too much navy on the boat? Oh, I don't know. I guess it's the heat. Well, you'll be in a hunter place someday. Jerry, not so bad, but next time give them all you got. No rainy days down here to save anything for. Jordan, you're on next. Come on. On the up and up, kid. You never played a cabaret before, did you? No. Only college shows. I knew you were lying. They all do. Well, you're on the spot now. Honey boy. There's the one I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah, you mean the one with the uh, gra uh, glasses. Well, uh, th that might be the... Uh, All right, sucker. Now there's two of you. <laughs> and now, hikers, I'm going to introduce the answer to a traveling salesman's prayer. She can go up and down the scale faster than a Wall Street bond. She's been a hit in New York and Chicago and other foreign countries. So get a firm grip on your blood pressure and meet Miss Dale Jordan.
you see that uh, Miss Dale Jordan gets this, please? Yes, sir. All right, Scallions, get out and make the customers thirsty. Okay. Well, Goofus, what do you want? I got a... Uh... Here, Jordan, you've collected a dividend already. All right, Nosey, take a run out, powder. There's a guy at table say 16 calling for Miss Royal. Maybe I'll get a break, too. Hey, wait a minute. See that he buys plenty and don't let that whiskey ten of yours catch up on you. Jerry Royal, you've hung that picture in a different spot every week for three months. Every time you hang it crooked. That's the right stance for number one. Every time he came home, he gave a list to the starboard. Well, we're going to feed the flesh this morning or rehearse on an aspirin tablet. I don't feel fit for anything. Oh, snap out of it. I don't know whether it's the heat or what it is that's getting me. I'm so tired of the same old faces and the same old songs. Oh, it affects different people different ways. Now, take me, for instance. I like to get drunk and go on a toot and kick Trixie's cash register. Sometimes I wonder whether Tom Baylor wasn't partly right. Of course he was right, but don't give him a break and admit it. Well, it won't be long now, baby. Keep a stiff upper lip. That's all we got to do is keep our head in the clinches. Well, how'd you like your hen fruit? Let's have them sunny side up. At a girl, we'll have them. Bill, that one's different. I'd like to meet her. That should be easy. Say, uh, Trixie. I'm off you for life, Bill Burr. Me with a brand new show, and it's taken you two, three months to get around here. Don't blame me, Trix. The boss has kept me jumping ever since he got in from Havana. Oh, Trix, uh, meet Jim Crosby. How do you do? General Manager, Standard Airlines. And general nuisance round the Panama office, too. <laughs> <laughs> Not Jimmy Crosby, the flyer. Right. Gosh, Jimmy, I saw you at the races last year, and you gave me heart failure. <laughs> You've been doing that to girls for years. <laughs> Say, Trick, how about the little girl that did the last number? Lay off, kid. She'd give a cold potato chill. <sighs> Come on. I've baked some potatoes before. Any of the others, Jimmy, but not this one. You'd only be wasting your time. Well, it'd be the first time I ever have. I've got a hundred bucks that says I won't be wasting my time. And I've got a hundred that says you will. 
Get to bed. Go buy yourself some lollipops. I like all day suckers, too. Good night, Mr. Crosby. Say, um, how about a little supper with me somewhere after you're through here? No, thank you, Mr. Crosby. Not tonight. Well, Miss Jordan, how about breakfast at my hotel in the morning? Yes. You're very sweet, Dale. You've been very sweet too, Jimmy. <laughs> you know, if I'd had my way, we'd be drinking champagne up in my room. Now I'd show up a rehearsal full of champagne and Trixie would kick me out. Oh, come on, Dale. Couldn't you chuck rehearsal just for today? No, I'm afraid not, Jimmy. Well, how about tomorrow? I thought... I thought we might take a little spin in my car. Have a nice day. Oh, lovely. It's been like a dream. Feel like going back to the bull ring? Of course I don't, Jimmy. But I have to. You don't have to go back there, Dale. I could make life very happy for you. Make this day last forever. You don't believe that, Jimmy. Any more than I do. There'd have to be a rude awakening sometime. I love you, Dale. I mean it. Oh, I admit I've said that many times before. I haven't been exactly a plaster saint. But you've made me realize for the first time what it means to say, I love you. Jimmy, no wonder you swept them off their feet. You know what I'd like to do? Hop into my plane with you and fly back to the States. It would only take a few hours. Mr. Crosby, am I to consider this a proposal? You can take this any way you want to. You name the terms. But I... I don't love you. I could make you love me. Well, Jimmy, if you can make me love you, what? I'll marry you, of course. But if you don't take me right back to town, I'll be late for my number at the bull ring. You mean he actually asked you to marry him? Well, that was the general idea, darling. But I don't love him. Oh, baloney. I married three cluffs who couldn't give me anything but love. It's a high-class name for hooey. Say, you still stuck on that bimbo from the Indian country. What'd he ever give you? Worm eating piece of coral neck to his wigwam. Say, the big salami did you a favor. If you let that Crosby off the hook, you ought to be. Say, passion flower, what's the idea of keeping that Dutch skipper waiting? Oh, nerd. He's so dumb we have to talk in the sign language. He can't even recognize a stop signal. Your boyfriend's outside, Innocent. And listen, if you bail out of Panama with Crosby, I want a month's notice to get another singer. You savvy? I don't think you need to worry about it, Trixie. Well, I don't care, but I never allow love to interfere with business. I thought that in your case, they were the same thing. Say, listen, hi-hat. Did you ever get a sock in the beezer? No. How does it feel? You better lay off that kid. You're on next, you know. I just hey, where to... is this Germany? In Switzerland? Ah, Switzerland, nothing. It's just on the other side of Hoboken. Oh, That's what ducky wucky. <laughs> well, what's the matter, Dale? You look worried. Trixie's been hitting the bottle lately, and the girls are all on edge. You know what I told you. Over and over again. I know, Jimmy. 
teeth of yours down your gizzard. Jimmy, get me out of this. Take me away. Anywhere. Well, what's happened? You don't have to go back there. Jimmy, do you still mean what you said about marrying me? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. All right. I'll fly to New York with you tomorrow. And I'll spend my whole life being grateful to you for taking me out of all this. You got my nose. Oh, yes. Jerry, dear, won't you come and visit me in my suite at the Hotel Washington? Boy, what a dump this is. Never saw so much plush since Astor's pet horse died. Oh. Boy, if I ever climbed into this, I'd never get out. Putting you up in style, huh? Oh, no, Jerry. I'm paying for this. That's the way it's going to be until after we're married. Well, you better get hitched in a hurry. Your bankroll won't stand this over a couple of days. When are the festivities coming off? We'll probably start to fly to New York late today or early tomorrow. When's the splicing going to be? Before or after? I mean, before or after New York. Oh, I'm willing to leave that to Jimmy. The only thing I'm sorry about is leaving you, Jerry. And I miss you too, kid. And I'm glad for your sake. You never were cut out for this kind of a racket. It's only for slobs like me. Oh, no, it isn't, honey. You've got to get out of it too. Sure. And one of my ships comes in. Come in. Oh, good morning, Jimmy. Hello, darling. You remember Jerry, don't you? Well, yes, of course. How are you, Jerry? Oh, topping. <clears throat> well, I guess I'd better be going. I'll see you before you go, won't I? Well, of course. 
Jerry, I'm going out and buy some clothes. Why don't you drop in this afternoon and look them over? Okay, I'll do that. So long, Crosby. You're a lucky egg. How are you, darling? I'm fine, thanks, Jimmy. When do you think we'll be getting away? Well, I don't know just yet. I have some business affairs to attend to. And then I've got to test out that plane. Tell you what I'll do. I'll fly over the hotel. It'll be about four o'clock. I'll be watching for you. Why don't you sit down? Well, if you don't mind, dear, I've got to get back to the office. I'm expecting an important message. There's nothing else you need, is there? No. Money? No, thanks, Jimmy. I don't want to take it. Not yet, anyway. Hello, Baylor. I'm Stan Blast and the Red Men. I've sold out. Going back to San Francisco. Well, I guess this place will struggle along without you. You never gave me much of a play anyway. Listen, Trixie, can you give me Miss Jordan's address? Sure, that's easy to remember. Washington Hotel. Just ask for Jimmy Crosby's suite. What? Sure, she's been playing around with him for a week. She's a smart girl. She'll do all right for Dale Jordan. But she ran out on me and left me in the lurch. And if I never see that snob again, it'll be years too soon. Hello, Miss Baylor. Want your key? Do you have a Miss Dale Jordan registered here? Yes. She's out now. Want to leave a message? I don't think so. She's checking out tonight or tomorrow morning, flying to New York with Jimmy Crosby. When my luggage arrives, check it through to San Francisco. You have my forwarding address. Yes, sir. Why, Tom. Hello, Dale. I, I've been buying some new clothes. So I see. Doing all right, aren't you? I guess I was wrong about you. You're really doing better than I expected. What do you mean? Well, you moved up from the Bull Ring to the Washington Hotel. I understand the next hop is New York. And I suppose a Park Avenue apartment. Yes, Mr. Baylor. I'm afraid that if I stayed in this part of the world any longer, I might be contaminated by some of its filth. My key, please. Thank you. I know. I saw him, too. You did? And? I don't know, Jerry. Maybe it'll do me good to get away. I guess Tom Baylor's just one of those things that's in the air down here. Well, he won't be here much longer. He's checking out bag and baggage. What is this, a new trousseau? Boy, it must have cost plenty of sugar. Everything I had but a couple of dollars. Hey, what is this, a marriage or a Dutch treat? I've been looking all over for you. What's up? Bill, I got myself into a tough spot. You know about me and Dale.
You never told me you were married, Jim. It was years ago, Bill. Before I ever even knew you. It's just one of those things. The woman's impossible. Every son I've ever given has been just like blackmail. What are you going to do about, uh, about Dale? I don't know. That's what I've got to think of. My plane ready? It's ready now. You're in no condition to fly, old man. Don't you worry about me, Bill. That's where I've always thought things out. Solved all of my problems. Up in the clouds. Boy, I could get myself an admiral in this, huh? That must be Jimmy now. Isn't it thrilling? You can have it. No. Oh, I'll pick him up and tie him in a bundle and throw him in like I do. Thin. What should we blow it in on? How about a bottle of scotch? No. I'm liable to get sentimental and turn on the waterworks all over your new dress. I have an idea. Let's get some flowers to brighten up the room for Jimmy when he comes back. Okay, kid. Anything but heliotripe. Gives me hay fever. Hello? Yes? Mr. Barrett? Certainly, send him right up. Oh, wait a minute. Will you please ask the florist to send me up some flowers? Oh, uh, about two dollars and seventy-five cents worth. Thank you. Bill Barrett's on his way up. I wonder what he wants. Probably trailing me to find out why I didn't buy those lollipops. Come in. Hello, Mr. Barrett. How are you? How'd you do, old thing? It's a topping day. What? Why, Mr. Barrett, is there anything wrong? Jimmy. Crashed. Gee, kid, he was a regular guy. You'll never know quite how regular he was. Here are your flowers, Miss Jordan. You got your nerve coming back asking for a job? Threw me down for a mug that was on the make for you. Please don't talk like that about Jimmy Crosby. Sure, he was going to marry Dale. Well, you poor sap. He bet me a hundred dollars on you. Looks like if he hadn't cashed in, I'd have to pay the bet. Now listen, Trixie. You lay off of Dale. She's been through enough. Say you get fresh with me and you'll go out on your ear too. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you, you sailor's delight. I know how you feel about this cobra joint, Dale. Gosh, we gotta eat, let alone earn enough dough to get out of this godforsaken no woman's land. I know, Jerry, but that man Burger that runs the place. It's revolting. Are there any more cabarets we haven't tried? Listen, I've tramped the streets until my pet bunion's gone on strike. Trixie and the bullring have all the high-class trade in town all sewed up. 
Well, the rest of the joints are just like the cobra. Thirty-nine, hundred and forty, a hundred and forty-one dollars. Uh-uh. Oh, and, um, eighty-five cents. Only sixty-five dollars to go, and we're on our way to San Francisco. Only ten more days in that burger joint. Oh, stomach, be good to me now. Oh, Jerry, why don't you keep your own money? I don't like the responsibility for all of it. No, oh, you don't know me like I do. A dreadnought's liable to come into port. I'll wake up to find I've been out in a binge and bought the grog for the whole fleet. <laughs> Sweet little kids, huh? Give us a kiss, huh? You blame it, my customers and friends, or get out. I'm here to see. Not to be mauled by a lot of drunken sots. Is that so? Well, I don't want no lilies around here. You're through. Get out. Hello, Berger. Hello. Indian Joe around? Well, why you want Joe? Plenty. Another knife in the dock. Come on, Joe. The captain wants to talk to you.
You can come in for a minute, Miss Jordan, but please don't excite the patient. She's a little weak. Number one could only see me now. <laughs> You're feeling better, aren't you? Sure, I'll be okay. It's a knife, more or less, in your gizzard. Listen, kid, I want you to promise me something. Of course, Terry. Anything. Don't you give old Sawbones or this joint any of the dough we saved up. I want you to buy yourself a ticket and scram for Frisco. Oh, no, dearie. I couldn't do that. Do what I tell you. Don't be a sap. This joint can't throw me out. Let them stand the gaff. I'll come to see you every day, honey. All you have to worry about is getting well. Don't forget what I told you. She's still pretty weak, isn't she? Yes. I am afraid it's going to be a long convalescence. She lost a great deal of blood, you know. What do you think we ought to do for her? What she needs most is uh, sunlight, proper nourishment, and uh, treatment. The place for health is sanitarium. How much will that cost? We have one near here, where the rates are rather reasonable. Somewhere around uh, $50 a week. All right, doctor. You make the arrangements. The uh, hospital bills are payable in advance. The total is one hundred and seventy-four dollars. Here's a hundred and fifty. I'll get the rest. Somehow. Come in. Tom! Why, Dale? 
I thought you were ill. Ill? What do you mean? in the hospital now. You... You came all the way down here because of this? Yes. Tom, I... I want to explain to you about Mr. Crosby. You don't have to explain anything to me, Dale. Hey, excuse me. I reckon it's how you dropped your bracelet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello? Hello, Jerry. Dale, he's back. He's back. Who? Who's back? Number one, my ship's come in. And guess what? Olaf's an admiral! In the Chinese Navy! Oh, Olaf, tell me something in Chinese. I love you. Olaf! Oh. 